Hey friends, design systems are essential for creating beautiful, professional, and consistent websites. In this lesson, I'll show you the basics of design systems and how they can help you as a new web designer. I'm going to break down what design systems are, why they are so important and popular with web designers right now, and how they can help you as a new web designer. Knowing which fonts, colors, and styling will work best with your content and brand is essential. When you standardize these things, it's called a design system. Design systems help you maintain consistency, so you're not making random color and font choices at every turn. They're also beneficial when working with more than one designer, because everyone will be following the same rubric and set of design instructions, if you will. Headings are always this font size, buttons are this color, corners are rounded at 32 pixels, and so on. Design systems are critical when working with a team or building a large project. They help maintain consistency across all design elements, which can be really helpful when multiple people are working on the same project. Design systems can also help speed up the process by providing a set of guidelines that everyone can follow. That said, do you always need a design system for every single project? Not every project needs a design system. In fact, for small projects or one-off landing pages, they can be more of a hindrance than a help. In these cases, you can probably skip the design system and go with your gut instead. All right, let's talk about how to create your first design system. Step one, audit your design. Before creating a design system, it's helpful to audit your current design or wireframe. This means taking a look at all of the user interface elements and layouts, structure that you're using, and noting what works well and what doesn't. You might also want to consider what fonts, sizes, colors, and design styles work best for your brand. This will give you a good starting point for building your design system. Now, when you're auditing your design, make sure to pay attention to the following. Font types and sizes, color palette, layout, grid system, design style, is it minimalistic, modern, brutalist, so on and so forth. Step two, create a consistent design language. A design language is made up of a few key pieces, typography, sizing, color, and graphics. When you standardize these key pieces, designing your websites and applications will be so much easier, more professional, and consistent especially as your project grows in size over time. Typography is a huge part of design, and when it comes to the web, there are a few key things to keep in mind. One of the best things you can do for your web design is to keep your font choices simple. When you have too many fonts, it becomes difficult to create a cohesive design, and the text becomes harder to read, plus too many fonts can also slow down your website's loading time. Simplifying your font choices will make it easier to design around a single typeface and make your website look way more professional. So when starting a new project, try to stick with two or three different fonts at most. This will help you create a more polished design overall. So where do you find great fonts? Well, there are a few great places you can find free fonts. My go-to is Google Fonts. They have a huge library of fonts to choose from and they're all free to use. Another great option is Font Squirrel. They have a good selection of fonts and offer some commercial licenses as well. Now, if you wanna keep things really simple, I recommend using system fonts. System fonts are a collection of fonts that come pre-installed on most computers. They're typically simple, easy to read and make a great option for your websites. Arial, Helvetica, Times New Roman, Tahoma, these are the most common system fonts. They load quickly, you don't have to think about font choices, people know these fonts and expect them to be decent. It's a great choice. Check out systemfontstack.com for more information on using system fonts in your websites. Now here's a fun one, the Inter typeface. Inter is a carefully designed typeface developed by Rasmus Anderson, and it's probably my favorite sans serif font for user interfaces. It's available for free on Google Fonts or from rsms.me slash inter. If you have an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, you can also use the Adobe Typekit library to add even more fonts to your collection not available in free font libraries. The Typekit library has a vast selection of professional fonts and they're all licensed for commercial use. A word of caution, just because you have many font choices to choose from, it does not mean it's a good idea to choose many. Too many font choices can be overwhelming and they can make your design look cluttered. It's always best to stick with a few well 
chosen fonts and use them consistently throughout your design. When it comes to sizing and spacing, consistency is key. This means using the same font size, line height, margin, padding, all throughout your design. This will keep a more polished look and make your design easier to experience. You might also wanna consider using a grid system to help with sizing and spacing. A well-established color palette is an integral part of any design system. It ensures that all elements of your design are cohesive and look great. Plus, it can help make your website or application easier to use by providing a visual reference for users. When choosing colors for your design, try to stick to a few fundamental principles. Use a limited number of colors, three to five. Use different shades and tints of the same color to create variety. Stick to a light, dark contrast for easy readability and use complementary colors for maximum impact. Now, if you need help choosing colors for your design, there's a few great tools out there to help you get started. Adobe Color Creative Cloud is a web-based, free web-based tool that allows you to create custom color palettes. You can choose from pre-selected ones, various color models, and you can also create your own. ColorMind is a free online tool that generates color palettes based on an image. All you need to do is enter an image URL and ColorMind will generate a palette of colors based on the image. Coolors is a great free online tool as well. It's my go-to. It, it provides resources of what makes good color palettes. You can choose trending, popular, and appealing color palettes. They have a whole bunch that you can kind of choose from. And uh, it's a great way to see what kind of colors you might want to play with. Choose primary colors, base color palettes off of that color. Lots of fun stuff you could do with Coolors. Another great way to get started with picking a color palette is to draw color palette inspiration from your favorite brands. Check out their website or social media pages and look at their color palette. Try to mimic their colors in your design or use, a, use them as a starting point for creating your own color palette. Graphics and icons are a great way to add visual interest to your design, but when using them, be sure to keep things really simple. Too many graphics can make your design look cluttered and when selecting graphics and icons, try to stick with a limited number of styles and shapes. This will help you maintain a cohesive design throughout your website or application. Step three, create a design library in Figma. A design library is a great way to keep your design elements, colors, and typography organized and consistent. When creating a library, be sure to include all of the following, fonts, colors, shapes, graphics, and icons, and anything else you might need. This will make designing your websites and applications way easier using a cohesive style that you can draw from. Figma makes creating a design library very easy, allowing you to create global styles, components, typography, sizing, and more so that your designs are more consistent. Another cool thing about Figma is when you update or change something in your global design library, it will reflect everywhere else in your design. Step four, document as you go. As you work on your design system, it's important to document and update any changes you make. This will help keep your project consistent even as your design and brand changes over time. Okay. So we've looked at the essentials of creating a design system for web designers. We've discussed the importance of consistency and how to create a design language using typography, sizing, colors, and graphics. And we also looked at how to build a design library and why it's essential to document changes as you go. By no means was this a comprehensive deep dive into design systems, but this should be enough to get you started and to help you improve your design skills and workflow along the way. I'll see you in the next one.